your tool time with tools, reviews, and stories from text that you can trust. Welcome to another episode of PDR Tool Time. This is episode 174. I'm Daniel Grom with your host, Vince D'Alessandro and John Renstrom. How are you doing, boys? Doing well. How are you guys? Alive hot, and well. Hot, 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 hot. Man, it's 100 degrees where I'm at. Yeah, that's pretty rare up there. I'm melting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm half of that and happy as hell. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Yeah, we're going through a little bit. You're 50 degrees where you're at, whatever. A little bit of heat wave going down through uh, Southern California, too. But uh, we're surviving. So So let's get to our sponsors. You know, before we do that, I want to say how happy I am with the Viper skins. So today I got to use one of of my um, bigger tequila tools and man it's so much more comfortable with those viper skins guys if you've got any of the ratchet handles um you know the, the stock ratchet handles all you do is the, you cut off the old uh dip and slap your viper skins on and you got a nice comfortable handle yeah all right yeah as, as oh. long as long as that ratcheting handle is from a1 yeah. that's right yeah <laughs> well no i d- didn't Small um, detail just it's <laughs> Fine, you know, fine print at the bottom. Um, I thought uh, Stan did some. <laughs> well, yeah, the Stan Liner ones. Yeah, absolutely. The the Stan Liner made uh, A1 Stan Liner tools. They fit on okay. there as well. And, and your Dent Reapers. The Dent Reapers, yeah. And the Dent Reapers, yep. yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I am I use the Viper skin on the dent, the smaller Dent, Re- dent Reaper where I don't need as much okay. torque. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Very comfortable. Very comfortable in the hand. The pistol grip takes you, what, like, a minute and a half to put them together, slap them on there, and you're good to go. Yeah. And uh, hog glue, of course, and hog tabs. We got Mobile Tech RX making you mo money. Mo, 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 mo money. Every and day. we got the uh, Magnatech mat, which I love today because I got my first hail car today, and I was taking the hood off. And, of course, I've cut up one of my Magnatech mats. I that know where you're nice- going with this. I have two strips, right? Uh-huh. And you put them right on the cowling, right at the corner of where the hood is. So when I, I have two guys huh? is holding it, but if they let it slide, it's going to hit that car, right? That those corners. So I had the magnetic mats and the guys look, they're a couple of my detailers, right? And they go, Oh, that's really cool. Cause he, he first goes, give me a rag to put over this. And I go, and nah, I got some better, more better. <laughs> Nice. Uh, awesome. Well, cool. And so now you can get them in colors. In so you, living color. So when you get your colored one, you're going to cut up your black one. Yes. <laughs> you're going to yes. like Because the colored ones are definitely better, and you don't want to be cutting those up just yet. But uh, yep. th- those are in limited supply right now. We're, we're working with our manufacturer to pump them out as fast as possible, but uh, it's going to be a couple months before it gets to my quota that I need. So uh, those are directly through the website at this point. The distributors don't have them just yet. And CBD Direct, um, we love these guys. They're uh, good supporters of ours, and we love using their products, of course, and helping us with the pains and aches that we have accomplished over the years of PDR. Yes. And and, and you on your bicycle and skateboards skateboards and all the... Records My that you hold. Evil days. Yes. Evil can evil <laughs> days. Yes. And uh, don't forget Edgy Tools. Edgy Tools edgy where tools. you get 15% off. We love off. Edgy Tools. Yes. He will give you uh, 15% off on uh, all his Edgy Tools and 10% off of other tools that he sells on his site uh, by putting in the pro- promo code PDRTT15. So, guys, we get to bring you somebody. I can't believe we haven't had this gentleman on our show yet. It's been well. I was on vacation. We had we had to wait till I got back. That's right. But we we should have had this guy on our show a long time. We have the owner of Kiko, Chris White. Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks, Daniel. Guys, I'm uh, real excited to be here. It's uh, a big fan of what what you guys are doing and. Uh, what a great industry where we can, you know, continue to learn together and work together, and and uh, it, it, it's it's exciting. So, yeah. Isn't it a great industry? 
It really is. It really yeah. is. It, it, it's, it, it is, you know, it's so much fun and, you know, to, to be able to have this much fun and make money at the same time feels like stealing. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and you yeah, know, there really isn't another industry that like this. No, there isn't. No, there really is. Now, uh, I, I got to hear the story when I was with you in St. Louis, uh, what, a few months ago, we were, we were hanging out together, uh, running around St. Louis for a night and had a good time. I, what was that event? I've been to so many events lately. I forgot what that was. <laughs> uh, that was the hail dot org. Oh, uh, yes. yeah. The hail hail expo. The yep. hail expo. Yes. With Ryan. Hail expo. Hail expo. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So th- we had a good time and, uh, th- I, I got to hear the story of how you got involved with, uh, the PDR industry. And I think it's a very compelling story. And, and I know there's, you know, no whiskey flowing tonight, but I think, uh, <laughs> you're able to open up with us and, uh, and let, let our listening audience, how did you get into the, to the PDR industry? Cause I think it's a great one. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it's, it, it's for us as a plastics manufacturer, uh, for the most part, we've always made product or pieces, plastic products that are, that are actually component parts of, of other people's products. And, um, that is, you know, it, we enjoy that business. It's, it's a business that's fed my family. Uh, but when you're making your own products, it's, it's something completely different. The margins are better. I mean, it's just better opportunities. And so, you know, we, we decided we were going to be a products company and we had no idea what products we were going to make. Uh, it's just that we decided we were going to be a products company, uh, like a, New Year's resolution one year. And so we, you know, I, I opened it up uh, to suggestions from some of the people that, that worked for me. And one of the guys brought a plastic tab and it was a red worth tab. Uh, I didn't know what in the world it was. And he said, this sells for $2 a piece and we need to make these. And I said, well, that's interesting that it sells for $2 a piece, but I have no idea of, you know, anything about paintless dent repair. I'd never heard of paintless dent repair. No, no idea even what it was. He said, well, my son-in-law does it and they get paid good money. And, but, but these little tabs, uh, they're somewhat consumable and they, and they pay $2 for them. And so I took the thing, I sat at my desk and I, I, I just didn't do much with it because I didn't know what to do. Then I remembered, uh, that one of my other customers, uh, a, 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 a a company that made stilts uh, for for uh, hanging drywall, construction stilts. Um, uh, the gentleman's name was Raymond Emmert, uh, my customer. And I remember uh, my customer telling me that he had a son that was an accomplished PDR guy and was uh, such an accomplished PDR guy that like he recognized that there were a lot of tools that maybe needed uh, improvement needed innovation. And so he, uh, had set out making his own tools. And so anyway, that was Sid Emmert. And, and so, um, Sid, uh, you know, I, I didn't Sid know. Swung D- Dentcraft. Dentcraft. That's right. Correct. That's right. Yeah. Sid Emmert of, of Dentcraft. Yep. Um, and, um, so, you know, I called my customer, you know, and I said, Hey, your son makes uh, paintless dent repair tools. And he said, yes, sir. And, and, I said, absolutely. I'd like to meet him. And so, so I, 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 I called Sid, Sid, uh, if you guys know Sid at all, uh, my gosh, n- not a, not a nicer man on the planet. Have yeah, I absolutely. Ever met Great guy. Yeah. Then, and Sid Emmert and, and really, um, a mo- you know, as I got to know him, he was, a he's a, he's a, he was a great engineering mind a great marketing mind and at the same time, just a fabulous human being. So, uh, you know, I, I went to Sid, told him what I wanted to do. Sid said, you know what? I thought about making tabs myself, but your story where you want to make your own products, guess what? I want to help you. And he reached into his desk drawer and he had a sack of tabs of every manufacturer. And he said, get out a notepad and I'm going to tell you everything I know about these, uh, each one of these tabs and what's wrong with them. And, uh, so I took a notepad and I went back, uh, with my notes and I, and I destructive tested every tab that was on the market at the time. And then we, um, you know, the surface area was kind of the key. We went with a, 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 a golf ball dimple to get more surface area. And then we worked with Sid. Sid was our, distributor and and we ended up 
through material science and, and maybe a little bit uh, different design, making a, a better tab than what was available now, at the time. What, and, uh, what year would you say it. this is? What's that? What year would you say this that this was about? Uh, this was 2009. 2009, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, because as soon as those hit the market, man, I made a ton of money off them blue dimpled tabs. Is that right? <laughs> oh, yeah. man. They were they were like the bomb. As soon as I got a hold of them, I couldn't order enough. I had them everywhere. I, in fact, I still have a few old soldiers that, that have hung around. You know, I've People still buy in. those. People still buy those from us. It, and, you know, uh, tab science... It's 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 crazy how much tab science can, has changed over the years, and you know how how much we how quickly Dentcraft helped us, you know, to be able to create a a, a spot in the market. And I, I really think in a, in about two years period of time, at least from the way uh, I understood it from from Sid and Richard, we we pretty much own the tab market up until the point that. Uh, uh, Keith Cosentino made a better tab with the, uh, you know, the uh, black plague uh, tabs. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, it's. Uh, but now you guys are crushing it once again with this dead centers. Yeah. You know, the dead centers, it was a two years. It was an idea um, as, as we thought through tab science, you know, uh, you know, just kind of touching base on like with the, you know, you have to continue to innovate in, in business yes. and no matter where you are, you cannot rest in no, Absolutely. no matter if, if you're number one, which we were with our dimpled tabs, you got to keep thinking, you got to keep uh, trying to, uh, to make a, a better, better mousetrap, a better, a better product. And what we did, uh, you know, what, what, what we saw happen with, with uh, the uh, black plague tabs and, and basically losing our market share you know, was something that didn't feel very good, but it, you know, we probably didn't put the amount of effort that we needed into to, to stay uh, on the top of our game. And so when we um, started thinking about what we could do better than, than what uh, Black Plague had done, certainly the surface, uh, there may be a better surface than a flat and smooth surface, but, but at this point, you know, with our testing, that's the, that's the best surface possible. But what drove us, to the dead center technology is the thought that glue pulling was largely very little time actually pulling tabs and much time knocking down. You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's 90% uh, knocking down and 10% actual glue pulling. And so yeah. what we were, you know, the premise that, that drove us to uh, the dead center was to say, well, what if we can reduce the knockdown? And, you know, so the, the thought of uh, in every tab, you need uh, both a, a rigid component and a flex component in order for that tab to, to work to its optimum ability. And so the, the center shaft of a tab is the rigid component. And um, the, out, you know, what's outside of that is, is, is it flexes and allows the metal to move. And so um, that the governing, uh, it, how, you know, no matter uh, what you do, if you don't, that diameter of the center rigid part is what governs what pulls, you know, how close to the center you pull. And so we had this theory that if we could make the shaft uh, narrower and that that rigid part more narrow, more, you know, a smaller diameter that we could get more of a pinpoint pull and less volcanoing, uh, of, of, of the glue pull process with a, with a typical hail tab. And in fact, that's what has happened with, with the dead center tabs you know, we we created a, uh, a, a shaft diameter that changes as the face diameter changes. And that allows, and, and and the truth is, you know, uh, a certain face diameter, no matter how good the glue is, uh, at least of the glues that are available today, you can only pull X number of pounds uh, per each uh, shaft diameter face. And so, therefore, you don't really need the full diameter that what current, uh, you know, the, the before dead centers were, were made from. Okay. And so, we just kind of trace that ragged edge of, uh, you know, just – strong enough to keep from breaking quickly, uh, but able to pull, um, 
you know, more or less like a micro high in the center that would make it much easier to knock down. So that's, that was what we tried to do. And, and I believe that's what we've done. That's what the market tells us that, that we've been able to yeah. do with the dead center. Tax. So what you're saying like, is that basically, you know, there's a lot of science behind this. There's, <laughs> <laughs> you're not just, you're not just a, a plastic uh, injection molder maker or, or, you know, plastic, plastic injection, uh, company that's just spitting out tabs in different sizes and stuff like that. You're just, you're, you guys actually do a lot of R and D about and behind it and develop these tools. Yeah, that's uh, these right. tabs. So, so you, you've broken a lot of tabs in your, in your, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thousands, thousands. And yeah, we, uh, unlike, uh, debt guys, we don't cuss when we break a tab. We just, we yeah. just, <laughs> We just well, learned something by it. Right? I think that's something yeah. that a lot of dent guys don't realize is that tabs are consumable. We we get so uh, protective know. of our tabs. It's like you know what? It's a piece of plastic. I know. I know. Guys yeah. are posting pictures of broken tabs. It's like really, you pay I, a couple dollars and it's made you thousands never. of dollars. Throw it away and buy another one. Yeah, yeah, it never bothered me. I always considered it consumable because when yeah. I had a good tab, like my black ice. Man, when you guys come out with that black ice, and I bought one of those when you guys first debuted them, oh man, I had four of them suckers, and I couldn't get enough of them because everybody was buying them out, and I was like, oh please God, don't break! (laughs) 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 I'm gonna have to glue pull three times just to do what I'm doing one time with these, and uh, but yeah, I always ordered uh, just a buttload in every single time because. Um, it's going to make me a lot of money before it breaks. And that little $3, I, you know, give her a little prayer, say a little thank you. And then into the trash can. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't care if a tab only lasts one time. If it was the greatest tab in the world, I'm fine with that. You know? Yeah. As long as it didn't cost. Stuff. As long as it pulls, pulls my, pulls yeah. my damage out. That's the only thing that's important for me. I, I just want to fix the dent. Um, We're, but, you know, yeah. what? Listen, I the, I love you guys. If, if if I was sitting next to you, I'd give you a kiss right now, Daniel, for saying that. <laughs> right? <laughs> but you know, the the thing that when you came across my radar screen was the the big huge flat taps because I was <laughs> I was already in the mode of I've been fixing big smashes forever, and when you guys came out with those, that was a dream for me because there's nothing on the market with big tabs, you know, get me to pull out the meat of a, a, a large dent. Huge and dent. that was like about so 2010 or so, right? Did you start? Oh, coming no, out with yeah, that? yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, you know, yeah. Mid 2010, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cause that, that I remember when I first saw it. Yep. Mm-hmm. I called a, a friend of mine and I was well within the, to hail, but I'm like, dude, you, you, got, you need this kit. Right yeah. here. I'm like, look this up and order this kit right now. And he gets it in. He's like, calls me a little while later on. He's like, dude, that glue gun moves some glue. You know, because he bought that full kit. You guys had that that five gallon pail glue gun. That you know, that thing would kind of spray out like the Wagner power painter of glue guns. Uh, but yeah. it yeah, the monster tabs, but man, what a time saver, along with the the leverage bar. And it uh, was because yeah. back back then, uh, you know, at the when the economy took a crap back in two thousand eight, nine, and ten, I found myself doing monster dents. That's basically what saved my business was by, you know, people were keeping their cars longer. They were uh, trying to get the bigger damage fixed, maybe pocketing insurance money, whatever they they were doing. It didn't matter. But door dings were a rarity back then, and all I found myself doing was these huge smashes and using normal PDR tools to fix huge smashes. They were it was killing me. It was killing my body. And in comes the big old Kiko tabs. And it's like, oh, thank God. You know, now I could get a lot <laughs> of this damage. You're welcome, Vince. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I mean, we used, Chad and I used to use the uh, leverage bars, you know, long before Daniel, you you got Carbon Tech to make you the the uh, leverage bar for, for pulling on those tabs. Man, I was doing that right out of the body shop. I'm like, we can replicate with this glue what we were doing on the frame rack. And then you guys came out with the monster tabs. And I was like, finally, tab technology is caught up with what we're trying to do. And we did, we've done some ridiculous glue pulls. You know, yeah, I think, it, I it's think yeah, it's just surface, you know, it, it's surface area. You know, when you, when you put those big smashes in, you don't put them in with a pinpoint, uh, you, you know, and so you, you, they go in with a, with a foot or a shoulder or, you know, some 
big uh, surface area puts the big yeah. dents in. So why not pull them out with a big surface area? I mean, it's just, yep. it's just intuitive to, to, to do yeah, that. Yeah. Now you guys have evolved this all the way into the centipedes hmm. and you've got your articulated tabs. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we've got, you know, the, the centipede series, uh, is, was a great series, you know, because, you know, with the super tabs, you, you know, they, they attack kind of the big soft dents, but, you know, creases and then also with body lines, you know, even if a dent looks big and round, but it has a body line running through it, then you want to attack it with that uh, with that centipede that and and pull that line back pull that line back first. So the linear tabs, the you know the 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 big crease tabs that are that are centipedes uh, have really become our our flagship tab for for fixing large damage uh, to cut those you know cut those damaged up into, into yeah those things you know, attack the great. strong spots first right so yeah I think you're. I think your best tool, though, of everything in your whole lineup is your Robo Lifter. I don't use anything other than the Robo Lifter. I love the Robo Lifter. I love that it has it's pivoting and you can you can get underneath a a, um, a side mirror. You can get in some awkward areas and pivot that handle. It's just fantastic. I I don't use anything else. That's that's my go to. I love that tool. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, it, it's it really has become uh, a standard. And and so, do you use the the both the Robo and the the Dent Gun, or do you just you know you use the Robo more than you use the Dent Gun? Because we had we came out with the Dent Gun before we came out with with the Robo. Yeah, and I have both. Um, I use the Dent Gun only when I need to use the ratcheting feature on it, and. Right pull a dent like i'll use it to uh to pull up a dent and hold it there when i'm trying to prevent some oil canning when i'm trying to knock down some highs or stuff so i don't use it that often but it's it's always there when i need it right yeah it's, it's interesting when that thing came out uh you know it has really all the same features uh as as a robo plus the you know that articulation of you know, being able to ratchet and pull and, and hold pressure. And then it has the, you know, the, the, the ergonomics, uh, of, you know, not having to hold your hand in a, in a, in a, uh, hold your wrist in a strange position while you're, while you're pulling uh, a traditional mini lifter. But, um, despite that, it just wasn't well received. Uh, you know, it had the, the, you know, the articulating, 100, 360 degree articulating uh, feet, and then the, and then the ball feet of uh, that. But until we like slimmed it up and put it in a traditional package, like more like a traditional mini lifter, uh, the guys just didn't accept it. So I, I always yeah. you know, I always think that's that's interesting. You know, it was just a a bit bigger, uh, and but yet it has. I think some, it was size that killed it. Yeah, maybe so. Right, you know. So it's a. Uh, but yeah, the the robo has been, um, you know, and now we've built uh, a system out of the robo. You know, we have, you know, uh, you know, the the traditional robo lifter. You know, we uh, the the robo body uh, becomes the feet for our bridge system, which is our, you know, K beam. Uh, we have uh, the. Uh, crease feet uh, and you put two robots together and now you've got like the ultimate crease killer sort of a package. And then we have uh, the ability to, to uh, have a hole straightener out of our robo. We have the ability to have, which uh, is my favorite hole straightener, by the way, I used to, <laughs> I used to crap out of it. I do. Yeah. I well, it. the reason I like it is all the other ones don't work on motorcycles. So like if you look down the fuel neck, you'll have a smaller opening and that gets bent yeah. up. And that's the only one that can reach down in there and straighten that for me. Yeah. Hey, let's take a minute here. Uh, guys, if you want to see Kiko's full lineup, it's uh, kikotabs.com, K-E-C-O-T-A-B-S.com. So don't just type in kiko.com because it'll take you someplace else. <laughs> so Kiko Tabs, you can see their full lineup. And I mean, the K beam, we could probably talk for an hour on this K beam, uh, the the setup and how that's evolved. Um, 
that I mean, that's pretty awesome setup for big damage. Well, it's funny with the cane beam because I had uh, I had thought about getting one, and then Mike called me up. Mike Toledo called me up one day. He's like, "Hey, do you want to come down to Irvine, California, and, and give me a hand with this demonstration?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's you know five minutes away from my shop. No problem. I'll give you a hand, Mike." And I didn't know what it was for. And then we show up, and it was a demonstration for Kiko. Chris was there, and it was for a, a large company that uh, we were doing the demonstrations for. And I had never used one before, ever. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am trying to help Mike out with a K beam and a K bar. And I'm like, oh crap! All right, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna wing it. You know, I'm just gonna use my PDR skills and do what I can and see what I can do with it and see maybe I'll impress myself and maybe I'll impress someone that's watching me. <laughs> so. Which, by the way, this is like my rental car, you know, my rental car that you guys are kicking dents in. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and trying out your first poles with a K-beam. <laughs> yeah. At that point, I had I had my robo-lifter, so I, I was confident with that. But uh, the K-beam and, and the, the K-bar, I'm like, oh, crap. And uh, yeah, so I, it was trial by fire, and, and I immediately once we we left there, I think within a week or two, I went and bought my K beam from uh, from uh, Ultra right after that. But yeah, it was uh, I I do a lot of stuff with the K beam uh, to hold tension, and it's a fantastic yeah. tool. And you've now bridged yourself with this tool into the bot- auto body industry as well, because there's such a need for that as well, isn't that right? That's right. Yeah. You know, the, you know, the auto body industry, again, like the, the techniques that that they're using are the only techniques that they've had for years of, of, you know, grinding away the factory finish and, and doing the, you know, the stud welding. Uh, but that opens, you know, with, with the changes in, in, uh, uh, vehicle technology with all the sensors, you know, you start putting the heat on, on those panels and you can ruin sensors and, all those panels are full of insulation. You can catch those. Uh, you know, I've heard of multiple stories of cars catching, you know, smoldering and catching on fire after everybody goes home uh, because they welded on them. And of course, you burn away the the e coat on on the back side of the panel, uh, which voids the corrosion warranty of, of the vehicle unless you put that e coat back. So, um, you know, uh, the with the advances uh, in 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 glue and and glue tabs, and then and then the system, you know, I'd be I'd re- be remiss to to not uh, you know to in in this interview to not give credit uh, to Jonathan Vandenfontein for helping us so much with uh, that, that's another interesting story in in itself that we had you know we had hail tabs and we had super tabs and we'd started the, the, uh, the centipedes and, you know, the centipedes weren't, you know, widely accepted, but, you know, it's about five years ago now that I was, uh, in Germany and I've, you know, met Jonathan and, and, and he came and bought every, you know, multiples of everything we had in the booth. And, and he was, you know, raving about how he, you know, liked the centipedes and we'd been getting mixed reviews on them. And I said, wait a minute, you, you like these things? He said, "Oh, I love them." Uh, and but he had made different adapters uh, to pull them to give them more rigidity. Uh, they maybe had too much flex in them. And then uh, uh, we went. I went to Brussels to see him, and and basically, you know, Jonathan grew up in the in the uh, uh, body shop industry, and so the there was many leverage bars, you know, similar to a, to a K bar or, and many, uh, bridges similar to a K beam, uh, that existed. And he said, look, you know, you, you have everything you need except for this needs to be a system. You know, this could be a system that, uh, would, uh, replace, you know, stud welding uh, to some extent. And so, you know, quite honestly, you know, that, that's, that's the thing. Um, you know, with with me, I've I've been very blessed to be around a number of people that have you know helped guide my path a, along the way and and help you know paint the the vision of of, of who we are and, and what we you know could become and and certainly Jonathan has has been you know instrumental in the development of of our line and and uh, you, know, um, you know just a good opportunity for me to be able to make sure that the world knows that, that, that he had a lot to do with it. I mean, certainly we've got, we've got multiple engineers on staff. And so he, he would give us, 
you know, he, he gave us the vision and, and then, you know, of course I caught hold of that vision. And then, you know, we had, uh, we have you know, four engineers on staff today. And so that, that, uh, vision coupled with uh, good plastics manufacturing and, and, and a solid engineering department has created a line that, that it is going to allow us, I, I believe, to, to change the collision industry. You yeah. know, we're, the, the collision industry is now ready for a less invasive, better quality, uh, more controlled uh, pull of, of, of large dents. And, you know, we're day by day, uh, we're, we're seeing uh, evidence of that day by day, body men are putting down their, their, their stud gun and, and picking up a glue gun. Yeah. So, and it's put, uh, it away it's, your grinder. Jonathan's about a great technician. I, I love watching his stuff because you could tell he, he, he makes me think he's kind of like watching Stan Liner in a way because he comes from a body shop background. I'm just, I came from college right to PDR, you know, so I, I didn't have a body shop background. I didn't know how to move metal like a body man would and watching Jonathan, you know, I've seen him at SEMA and I've seen him in different places. It's like, no, don't do it like that, Jonathan, but he does it like that and he gets it to where we need to get it as well. And he gets it, in his own way. And it's kind of a, like a genius mind, kind of like Stan liner. It's like, you would never think of doing it that way. And it's a totally different perspective from a PDR perspective. And what better candidate for like, for shopping these products to, uh, other body men is from a body man's perspective. They, Jonathan would, these gentlemen would work it like Jonathan would. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, you know, I, I think the advantage of, and again, you know, uh, it's that combination of being in both an accomplished uh, PDR guy and an accomplished body man. Yeah. But like, you know, he started out as a body man and then when he learned PDR, um, you know, doing that in a, in a body shop environment, then you're not a, as afraid to push the limits. If you're a PDR guy and you don't have your own shop, then when you start, you know, wrecking panels and, and, yeah. you know, yeah. and, 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 you know, tearing off paint, that's going to cost you a lot of money. You know, it's exactly. going to cost you thousands to, to fix that. But, but if you're working in a body shop and, and, and learning to, to push the limits of, of, of PDR, then that's a, that's a great place to be, you know, and that's, and I, and I believe that's why Jonathan has been so successful is that he's very, you know, uh, he, he's able to push the limits because of, because of what he knew and, and, and then the contacts to be able to go, to go fix it. If you go too far. Right. So now, when I, yeah. now when I met you, saw you guys at SEMA this year, um, talking with Jonathan, um, and he started explaining to, to me the system that you guys were putting together for these body shop guys. It was, it was really, really good. Um, uh, what is the word? Um, curriculum i guess um that you guys put together and you have and there's an acronym for the steps what is that uh you know we well the the acronym for the system well, we call it gpr now glue pull repair uh and then we also have we call it the six c's so six c's the, that's yeah, it yeah six c's, yes. share that with our listeners yeah so uh you know what we what we and actually as we've developed this system uh, you know, we've done SEMA for the last uh, four years. This will be our, our fifth year doing SEMA. And, you know, um, the idea of training on uh, glue pull, you know, because of our upbringing in PDR, it, you know, training for glue pull isn't something that we necessarily uh, thought that we should offer. But when you get into that new market, um, you know, it, it you have felt, to. It felt like, you know, every other guy that was coming that would, you know, see our videos and see our demonstrations was just enamored by what was possible. I mean, literally the first couple of years we were at SEMA, they would look at it like it was like we were selling snake oil, like, okay, what's the trick here? I mean, like there's, there's no way this is real. Um, and you know, and, and then they began to, they began to believe it. Um, but they would ask for training, you know, and it's like, well, we don't offer training. We don't offer training. And so, um, you know, uh, this year, actually, this past year, that when I believe that was at SEMA, when we, when when Jonathan and I were were, were talking with you, Daniel, and and 
it was that that show that that you know it just happened time and time again and you know guys were asking just like always and i called everybody together and i said look the next guy that comes in and asks if we offer training our answer is yes and you know and guess what we're gonna do it and so um you know and and jonathan has really some great presentations but you know we 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 sat down and 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 uh you know we hadn't really you know, I'd watched what those guys did, but, but I, I kind of removed myself from the office for uh, a better part of a week, week and a half, which it's almost embarrassing that it took that long to work through the, you know, and, and creating this process, the six C's where you, you know, clean your panel, uh, and clean your tabs, uh, you know, and then, you know, the second C is, is, is check, you know, clean, check, choose, couple correct continue so you know the idea being that like you know if you follow the steps yeah follow the steps works. If, if, if you, you don't follow, follow the steps, steps it's a discipline right you know yep. so yep. if you if you with everything it, it's not rocket science but you know there's no question that like there is uh, a, a method a that you have to follow and and yep. yeah. if you follow that discipline you can be very successful and so you know we you know, that was our entrance into offering training. And then now we've, you know, we've had uh, a, a couple of training events at Kiko. We're going to have another one um, in in July at, at Kiko. Uh, we've had a number of training events uh, in body shops uh, throughout the country. And, you know, we're actually going to be at ICAR uh, in July as well. This will be our second trip to ICAR and we'll be showing them uh, the six C's and, and our full uh, GPR uh, glue pull repair uh, training system for body shops. Well, Again, ultimately, not, we're not trying to teach body shops PDR. You know, excuse me, right. John, but it's important. You know, it's it's really vital that that our PDR listeners understand that it's not our goal uh, in in any way to teach body shops PDR. It's that you know, it's that last five or ten percent of, of 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 PDR is what the magic is, and and what yeah. we're really trying to teach them to do is use uh, glue pulling GPR to be able to pull out uh, the bulk of the damage and then use their traditional techniques. That's where the last step continue comes in. If pull the pain. Yeah, exactly. It's pull the pain. Yeah. It's pull the well, pain. large damage repair is completely different from PDR. And you're, <clears throat> you're taking the collision industry large damage repairs completely different than large damage PDR versus hail and door dents. Collision glue pulling, uh, that the idea is to move the material without destroying the inner layers or detempering the metal. So, the and the collision industry is an old body man. I grew up with the, the dirty rag, wipe the panel, rub it down with your elbow. If you spit on it, it's even a little bit cleaner. And to break that mentality out of body shops, and it, it's still there. That mentality is taught, I mean, all the way down through trade schools, you know. Uh, when I first started showing body men how to rough out using glue, they looked at me like I was some sort of, of mystical moron because I wanted the panel all blown off and wiped clean before I ever started. And then you guys have taken this to a true, just phenomenal lever. When the K beam come out, I'm like, man, we used to make that on our frame rack <laughs> <laughs> when we were doing big poles. And before all the cars had the intrusion beams, man, we used to take our mo clamps and clamp both sides of the door and then stretch it between two towers to tension the metal. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. then you would drive out your eyebrows with our body hammers and everything. And now, now I'm watching all of that stuff come back with glue pull. And uh, I always called it adhesive pulling so that it, it didn't make people sound like I was out there with a can of crazy glue. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think it's phenomenal. And I think it's awesome that it's getting into the body shops because we got to get the, you know, pardon the expression, but we got to get the monkey mentality out of fixing cars in auto body. It's been chased out of mechanics, but for some reason, auto body is left like it's still 1952 and nobody wants to think that it's advanced any bit further. Well, and you and, know what? A lot of the old body guys aren't around anymore. You know, they've yeah. all, you know, passed away from breathing in asbestos and all sorts of body fillers <laughs> that were back exactly. then. Exactly. Yeah, you know, the new and, guys are much more receptive. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, and now we have all of this stuff. There's this right here. I've got the Kiko glue pulling collision and hail manager kit up on, on a screen here. And he got that into a body shop. And man, if I'd have had that when I started back in 1990 versus grind it off and huff in the, the dust and the dirt, you know, and then you, you go home every night and you, you shake off the pound of dirt on the front doorstep so you can walk in the house and not ruin the carpet. Yeah, you take a and, shower and blow your nose and it's black for like yeah, an hour, right? Yeah. <laughs> Spend all day in a respirator. Uh, nah, man. This, yeah, this now is you're changing seeing, the world. Right, now you're seeing awesome all stuff. these pullers coming out. Ultra just came out with a an elaborate system. Uh, there's another company that I saw that uh, someone bought on Facebook, showed off. Um and you know they're getting kind of elaborate i think it's it's a little bit overkill of what they're doing in some cases but really we're bridging a a gap uh from pdr to large collision between large collision and just what the body shops are doing well Um, absolutely but jonathan's got one of his videos one of them that i watch that i show a body shop every single time and that's him glue pole and using the frame rack because they're doing the side of a van and he's using the centipede tabs and that van body is a ultra high strength steel you can't grind it off and you can't weld anything on it otherwise you've you've detempered it and then once you're breaking you know and, and i'm seeing this argument come through the collision industry about breaking those factory welds and breaking that factory seam well if you can't weld anything on they don't know how to pull it out well man, the adhesives, the glues that are out there now, the tabs, like we've been talking about, the polars. Now you have the ability to to go down the same that we've done in metal for all these years. Now we're doing it with glue and we're moving down the line, down the tab without having to cut everything off and start over. We're just moving down and we're reversing that damage as it's coming out of that panel. Uh, and now you're getting away from the cave and pave aspect and these guys are down into a light skim coat and a block and some primer, you know, not, not even the four inches of filler. Now, so, no. now, Chris, I, we, we, we're running a little bit short on time. I, I did want to address a few things that uh, you might, as, as a manufacturer of tabs and things like that, there's a lot of myths out there that you might be able to dispel for some of our listeners. And uh, you know, not without, not with, naming names or anything, but you make the a large percentage of the tabs that are on the market, right? Yeah, you, we make some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's for sure. Uh, you know, I, I I think it's no secret that, um, you know, uh, the Black Plague tabs, uh, you know, like the Black Ice tabs are, are actually Keys uh, Black Plague tabs that out of our ice material. And, and so we you know, we manufacture for him, you know, that was, that was an interesting conversation. Uh, you know, I mean, quite honestly, you know, with our dimpled tabs, you know, Keith just kicked our rear end, uh, with those, uh, original, you know, the, the, the dark gray, uh, black plague tabs. And, um, you know, then he came to me, uh, and he said, look, um, I'm, I'm having trouble getting these made and getting these made right. And I see what you, I see what you're doing and I know you can make them better. I know you can help me, but you know, will you? And, you know, I thought about it for a moment and I thought, here's a guy that has just, you know, completely demolished us in the market, but we're a contract manufacturer and, and uh, you know, uh, I might as well have a piece of it uh, rather than lose it all. Right. You know? And so, uh, so, so anyway, um, you know, that, that started uh, a relationship that, 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 you know, Keith and I grew and, and then, you know, we've, we've done a number of, uh, of other uh, contract manufacturing uh, relationships with, with, uh, with, with Dentcraft and others really, you yeah. know, it's, it's a, uh, you know, we, we're happy to be, um, you know, we, we want to keep developing our own products, but we're also happy to be the contract manufacturer for many of the, plastics components uh for the pdr industry i mean it's uh, like we talk, talked about earlier it's a it's a really fun industry and it's you know guys compete uh but you know it's a what i would call an abundance mentality rather than a scarcity mentality you know when you have like yep. you throw up your walls and you say i'm going to get mine and i don't want to make sure anybody doesn't uh you know uh, get what i got 
or you can pull down the walls and try to figure out how to work together and 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 try to create uh, a, a bigger market and create you know like for now you know we we think that it's our calling uh you know to be able to bring the pdr industry and the collision industry the traditional body uh technician and the pdr technician closer together you know we sure. we, we think that's our calling you know yeah. and so anyway it's a it's a really a, a, a collaboration yeah. is, is what defines uh, our success, and, uh, my success personally, and our success as a company, and and we do that with other companies in PDR and and outside. As that's well. great. That's awesome. Fantastic. There's uh, there's a couple other questions that uh, I had too. Like uh, there's th- one thing that always comes up with PDR technicians is oh I got an idea for a tab. You know there is I think there's a, a myth that it's just a, a super simple thing that's cheap to make. It's cheap to develop and stuff like that. And I think, you know, people don't realize how much a mold costs and how much, you know, designing a mold and, and designing a, a tab. There's a lot that goes into that. Isn't that correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, we, you know, like I said, we have uh, four engineers on staff and, you know, those guys, you know, they're, uh, they, they're high earners. I mean, they're guys that, that, that have studied a craft and, and, you know, it takes hours and hours, uh, you know, to be able to design uh, a product. And uh, then, you know, now it's designed. Now we have to have a mold built. Uh, and mostly, um, you know, we used to have all our molds built in the United States, but, but you know, we mostly have them built in, in China. Uh, but still, you know, the cheapest mold I've had built in the last year is, yeah, maybe Five, seven, eight thousand dollars, and the most expensive is uh, maybe one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So, yeah, yeah. You know, these these molds are are you know ridiculously uh, expensive on the upfront capital side. You yeah, know? I mean, you know, and that's the that's the other advantage. You know, it, as we can bring collision and PDR together, then our volume grows and you know, right. Better. Do you think, do you think that inhibits our our advancement in the in the tab development? I, I don't think there's any doubt, you know, I mean, you know, capital, uh, you know, capital expenditures and there are always a limitation to innovation and team development. You but know. there you're talking, you know, seven, eight to $150,000 for something that, you know, in three years is going to be obsolete because <laughs> yeah. you're going to, you're going to make something better uh, or the industry is going to push you to make something better. Well, that's, you know, a, and that's, that's, and that's something guys need to keep in mind too. That's not, when he says he spends seven thousand dollars to build a single uh, mold, that's not a lifetime mold. No, you no. guys are going to stop buying that tab in in thirty six months, and you're going to be buying the next tab potentially. So, well, like look at look at dead center tabs. Dead center dead center tabs have been out for two years, and now it's like they're getting out there more, and people are seeing how useful they are. Uh, I was one of them, you know. I'm like, oh no, th- there's no way. I've never had luck with tiny tabs. I had the gangrene ones. I had the the dead or the black plague ones. I'm like, I, I can't get them to stick. I can't get them to stick at all. Daniel, he, he could attest to it too as well. He was having problems. And next thing you know, you know, a couple years later, there's new glues out, and now my dead center tabs are sticking. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. pulling out dents. The, the, the glue science is amazing. That's for sure. It yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. And you know, uh, Mr. Dyer, Craig Dyer is, is uh, he, he does a lot with that glue science and it's amazing what, what it takes yeah. just, just like tabs, you know, there's a science behind it. And I think us dent technicians, we take that for granted. Uh, it's not Very just much. a simple, Hey, I'm going to come up with a tab and it's, it's going to be really cheap and I'm going to charge 10 cents a piece for it and sell a whole bunch of it. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, upfront costs, costs are going to cost you fifteen, twenty thousand dollars before you even make one. Yep. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's the uh, uh, you know we, we deal with you know and then outside of PDR we deal with a lot of inventors and you know it, people are shocked uh, at you know how much money it it, it does cost, right? You know, and I'm you one know, of them. All, I'm one of them. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> and, and and then really, you know, honestly. You know, uh, no matter what the product is and no matter the industry, um, I always tell people, you know, if you know the right people and you have money, you can have anything made, but can you sell it? You know, at at the end of the day, that's, 
you know, marketing and selling are, are number one. And that gives me a chance to, to plug a couple more guys, you know, uh, Kenny Austin, who joined me to help build e-commerce and, and, and soon will end up being, uh, a, a partner at, at Kiko has really, I don't know if you guys have watched how much, uh, our website has advanced in, in the last year and, and, you know, he, he's a true marketer and a true technology, uh, you know, a guru, honestly. And, you know, I barely knew the difference between marketing and sales. Uh, and, you know, when I hired my first marketing guy, then it took about three or four months and we hired another one in, in Brock Berkey and, and Brock's our marketing manager now. And we're, you know, to, to change an industry, to change uh, behavior, that's marketing, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, those are things that like, you know, um, again, I'm blessed to have like great people around me to, to help, uh, you know, when you see what we're, what we're able to do, uh, it has everything to do with listening to our customers, listening to, to your listeners, listening to the guys like you, uh, and then being able to apply, you know, what we, what we know as a manufacturer, use our, use our engineering and our sourcing and, th and then, and then to have, you know, the, the Kinney's and the Brock's to be able to then go uh, share that with the world. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, so. and one of the things I tell guys is when they're talking about a product to bring to market, I'm like, first of all, identify a problem. And then when you identify the problem that, that the industry is having, how big of a problem is that in our industry? And the bigger it is, the more profitable it is. So that's number one. And then number two is solving the problem. So a lot of guys have told me ideas and I'm like, well, that's really not that big of a problem. So it's not really going to be a big money maker, you know, yep. and guys get deflated by that. So the bigger the problem, the bigger the industry has with it, identifying it and then solving it then you know you can quantify it and say, okay, this is worth going forward and making the tool. Now, yep, I agree. Th there's one last question I have for you real quick because we are running out of time. But uh, another thing that comes up quite a bit, and you're the manufacturer of a lot of tabs. So what kills a tab? Uh, do you have any tech tips? Because some people say soak them in alcohol. Some people say scuff them with a little scotch bright. Is, is there... You know, there's people that say uh, if it's clear, don't soak it. If it's uh, colored, uh, non-translucent, you could soak it. What, what's going to prolong these cheap uh, guys saving on their tabs a little bit longer? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, not that you want them to hold on to it. You want them to buy more. He's not going to tell us. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, well, first of all, I wouldn't scuff anything uh, because we, you know, we've we've learned that that highly polished, smooth surface. Uh, has the best ability to adhere, you know, creating, it's not exactly like a vacuum effect, but it's more or less like a vacuum effect uh, and, you know, not allowing any air to get between uh, the glue, you know, the molten glue and the, and the face of the tab. So I wouldn't at all uh, suggest that. Now, you know, uh, certainly, you know, cleaning tabs with alcohol is, 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 a, is a good idea. Um, I would also say that controlling the temperature of the tabs, you know, if it's, if it's cool at all, just like you're, just like we advocate, you know, in, in the six C's, we advocate warming up the panel. Um, we would also advocate warming up the, warming up the tabs. You know, I mean, if you have, you're starting, you know, these, no matter the tab, but particularly like the ice material, you start, you know, you got a 40, 50 degree shop and you start, uh, railing on that, uh, that that ice material uh with a with a slide hammer it, it's gonna give it just doesn't you know thank you but if you thank warm you. that you warm that up first uh and and you're gonna have you know better success so that's I, it i know I, the next tool yeah a warmer a warmer a bread warmer there you go yeah <laughs> a little tray that warms up your tabs i like it <laughs> Send me all your unused glue pots. I yeah. have an idea. There you go. We're going to be millionaires, guys. Yes. Yeah. I know a plastic company that can make but, something. But that's funny that you say that because I've, I've, that, that last year, I kind of came to that revelation that it was, I was like, sometimes it would stick and sometimes it wouldn't. And it was like, 
because I was picking a new tab that was colder than the tab that I just used. I, I was just too lazy to clean that tab. And that, and then the next one I used didn't pull as well. I'm like, there's nothing different here except the, the temperature of that tab. Remember, so. you were today's years old when you figured out to warm up your glue tab. Yeah. <laughs> today's years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. Uh, well, Chris, we want to thank you for coming on. Do you have any uh, uh, burning desires? Uh, remarkably, we just talked for an hour. And, uh, you know, we usually keep this podcast for uh, at about an hour. So uh, do you have any burning desires that you want to get out there to our listening audience and, you know, let them know what's up? Or any yeah. deals or any, any, any future buy more products. tabs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I, I, I was telling you about Kenny. Uh, he's going to be highly disappointed that, you know, it only, it took John to be the only one to mention Kiko tabs.com. Uh, <laughs> like uh, Kenny said he would have a ticker up and he'd be counting a number of times. <laughs> Kiko tabs.com. And he's, you know, matter of fact, he's only going to get two out of me. So uh, uh, again, and Thanks so much, guys. It, it really is an honor to be in this industry. It's an it's 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 an honor, you know, for such a, a small boutique industry. You know, guys just band together, and 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 to have uh, guys like yourself that are willing to take extra time to put together programs like this to be able to continue to educate and inform. I mean, it it, it is it is invaluable, uh, you know, and, and it's, and it's that environment that has bred the opportunity for a company like ours to rise up and have a chance to, to change the, how collision repair is done. Right. You yeah. Know, I hope we look back on this and go, God, remember the stuff that we talked about back then and look how far we've come because uh, that's how I think yeah. about the tab industry. It's, it's, yeah. we're baby in it's, in the well, heck, just industry. look at the memory lane we just went down. Oh, that came out in 2010. Right. That that came yeah. out in 2008. You know, and and now we're we're smoking by it. Look at look at yeah. everything that's out. It's got there. so much more to grow. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yep. Yep. Well, well, Chris, you're one of the nicest guys in the, our industry. I always enjoy sitting down talking to you. And for our listening audience, Chris is one of those guys that you could just approach and talk to, tabs, whatever. He's a good guy. Yep. Make sure, uh, you know, and it's always an open door here, too. So if you have something new and coming out, we'd, we'd love to have you or Kenny or one of you guys come on and and uh, give us yeah, some use good info. Us. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. We've, we've got... Uh, a number of things coming down the pipe. So we will absolutely, uh, you know, send it to you on a regular basis. So, yeah. Cool. See, and I, I saw a lot of stuff on uh, KikoTabs.com here, but probably the most important thing that I saw was a, a link to Mobile Tech RX. Just, oh. just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, remember that's KikoTabs.com where you can click on Mobile Tech RX. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. oh, wonderful. Well, now we figured out why John was with the picotabs.com all night. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, that's good. All right. Magnatech is up there too, so we appreciate that. <laughs> we thank you, Chris, and uh we appreciate you coming on. Sorry it took so long to get you on the show. Um, and hope to have you back soon with some new innovative Kiko stuff. So what yeah, do you I look forward to Love hearing to come more. Back. Thanks, guys. Yeah. What, what do you got to say, Daniel? Guys, don't forget to level up your tabs. <laughs> and don't do stupid stuff like pull with cold tabs. And uh, keep it stiff with glue tabs. <laughs> Thanks for that. And we're out of here.